What's up YouTube, CLT Aviation 13 here with a NG model 1 to 200 scale unboxing video for you guys today. As you can see, this is the AirTran Jet Connect CRJ200 operated by Air Wisconsin. Registration for the aircraft is N445 Alpha Whiskey. Pretty cool to finally get this model. Um, this is, AirTran meant a lot to me back in the day. It was, had a lot of childhood memories with them. I never flew the CRJ200s. They were briefly around. Um, you know, way, I say way back in the day, but for, in my standards, it's kind of way back just because I was a little kid at that point. But anyways, they primarily operated out of Atlanta. They did all kinds of stuff, obviously locally in the Southeast region and, um, and so on. Never got to see one in Charlotte. They always flew the 717s here. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think Airtrain flew here to Charlotte. I think the Sierra Day 200s went away by the time they actually initiated their service here on a regular basis. But um, anyways, one cool thing before I start, obviously this is, for those that don't know, this is the old Airtrain livery. They um, never, this never formulated to the to the new livery. Uh, so, well, technically this, um, I was going to say that kind of looks like the new one, but no. Anyways, um, this is the box. This is the front of it. Got the sides. Um, NG models looking good. I already took this out. This kind of already fell out, but you guys are used to this if you Beginning of the NG models, uh, this is for the reward program that they have. Uh, really cool. I keep hoping that Gemini Jets, as much as i not a really big fan of them, that's not a topic that we'll need to bring up for this video. But if there's one thing I wish they would do in the 1 to 200 sky, I wish they would make a, an Air Trend 717 in the old livery. I think that would be absolutely phenomenal. But anyways, let's let's pop this boy open. I have not seen this. I have only took the flap out and the, um, the little card that was already falling out. So I'm not really sure how this looks. But uh, so here it is. Top side view. Sides. So it's really cool. They got that pastel white coloring. I think it's really nice. Got the little little packaging sleeves and everything. And then, and then, oh, come on, buddy. Ah. There we go. All right. Let's put that over there. So that's that. Let me pick the camera back from the stand. So here it is. Here is the Air Trend Jet Connect CRJ200 in that 1 to 200 scale. Really impressed. It's kind of, it's bittersweet to see this just because, I don't know, man. Air Trend was always a, uh, I always loved them as a kid. Would always go to Atlanta, stay at that Renaissance Hotel to uh, watch some planes down there. And I'd always come out to the airport to get pictures of Airtran back in that time time frame. But uh, really fun kind of seeing it. And <laughs> never really thought I'd see a day of buying a Sierra Day 200 for Airtran. But uh, we'll zoom in. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on the on the winglet here. Ah, there you go. There's the little A that we all remember. So yeah, winglets look good. Um, as far as I can tell, I'm not an expert on this plane, but it seems to be pretty much how it was in real life uh, so there's the front and yeah it's kind of uh you know with everything that's happened that's been impacted in the industry the Sierra Day 200s are slowly finding their ways out the door I mean I think Delta is really close to getting rid of them uh, I know uh, American just picked up the ones from Air Wisconsin so those ones are still bouncing around a little bit so the days are definitely n numbered on this little, little RJ, and um, which isn't a bad thing. I was never really a fan of this aircraft. It's very uncomfortable, not a good ride. It's really, really bad and choppy and turbulence. But, uh, but it did serve its purpose in those small market airports to help connect to the hubs. So definitely, definitely had a good role. But uh, you know, as you can kind of see, the trend is larger aircrafts and upgrades to mainline planes. So it's definitely a good thing for for consumers. It does suck for the small markets that lose service. But uh, and then uh, I'll get to the belly. Let's see, so looking pretty good. It's a I mean not so much you know it's it's what you would expect in a in a CRD two hundred. Nothing really all popping or jaw dropping here. Just the CRD two hundred. So um, since we're here, I would give a little preview of what's going on. So I do have a. Once we get the dang camera to focus. So I have a fictional airport coming to YouTube soon. As you can see, this is it. So just to give you a little preview of everything as I put this down. Um, this, of course, like I mentioned, is going to be a fictional airport. 
And I'm very proud with it. I designed it myself, obviously, in lieu with with uh, layover layouts. Um, he did a phenomenal job on the mat, and I'll obviously be, I'll be kind of promoting slash advertising that in the near future. Once I start getting some pictures and videos for this thing, I'll start rolling more stuff on the Instagram. Uh, if you do want to see more pictures and everything, the Instagram is CLT Aviation 13, and you can find some more stuff on there. But anyhow, like I said, it's going to be a fictional airport. This is pretty much how the gating is going to be set up uh, for the for the airport. So I got two or three JetBlue gates. I'm still debating on how many JetBlues I want. Uh, I do love JetBlue to death, but they kind of leave me a little bitter with their lack of service um, in Charlotte. They still have not improved on that in that degree. Um, two wide body gates right here, which is uh, Alpha 3 and Alpha 2. So basically that means these wide body gates can park up to an A350-1000 or a 777-300 without having any limitations or blocking any adjacent gates, which is a really nice feature. Also, you will note that you'll see the, the hybrid design wide body gates. Uh, so in this, in this scenario, I'm trying to see if I can grab a wide body real quick. Uh, oh boy, let's see. So if I wanted to use a wide body here, it would come in on this dash line and it would block alpha four. So it'd be alpha four X and it would block alpha six due to that limitation of it being a hybrid wide body gate. And as you can see, I kind of messed up in the design flaw. Not a huge flaw, but I'm definitely not gonna use this wide body gate too much where the Air Greenland's parked. So Alpha 8X is obviously our hybrid gate, but as you can tell, if this gate's in use, it blocks Alpha 6 and Alpha 10. So it takes three gates for one wide body. So it's not a, not a definitely a, not a convenient um, a gate to use, but it's just, it's more of a flexibility type thing. So most of the time in the fictional videos, when you see it, you'll notice that I'll fill up these. will obviously have wide bodies. And then this one will be used a lot um, in the videos and for the setup. This just kind of wrecks my system up a little bit. And then you have our Delta gates, um, preferential use for Delta. And obviously some of these gates will be common use, uh, which any aircraft or airline can use. Uh, then you got our Spirit gate. American, Alaska, still not set in stone on all the gate assignments, so it might change upon making the video. Uh, I might even just give JetBlue two gates, and then once the merger happens, they'll get these three. Maybe American just one. I'm not a huge fan of American, so <laughs> kind of like Delta a lot better. Um, on this side, this is kind of where my Southwest are. This is gorgeous. I don't think I'm going to give them this many gates, though, where you see the Freedom 1. I think I kind of want to have a really cool Southwest operation. That's kind of where I'm going at with all this. So it might be nice to have, you know, as you can see in this camera view right here, one, two, three, four, five Southwest gates. Um, I think that might be the most I'll give them and have kind of like a little, little mini focus city for Southwest. I'm still trying to debate on that. This, by the way, shout out to this Desert Gold Max 8. This thing is gorgeous. Oof. And then here I'll give, I'll explain this and I'll wrap the video up. Um, so this is a very unique spot, and I have the RJs here so I can kind of demonstrate how this is going to be utilized. So in theory, what's probably going to happen is I'm basically going to give United this gate. So we'll take this Southwest out, and then let's move a United Main Line. We'll move a United Main Line over here. Don't worry about the. We'll fix that later. So hypothetically, you see uh, Bravo 6, Bravo 7, Bravo 8. So these are standard gates. All three of these can park a Boeing 757-200 and below. Now, hypothetically, I had this designed as a flexibility type thing. So, for example, if I have two United Main Lines at the gate at once and I want to still have an Air Canada flight, they're partners. So I kind of like to keep – that's kind of cool to keep them together. So I'll park Air Canada there, right? However, if I wanted to do a, a – you know, kind of maximize my flexibility with United, what I'll do is you have these little uh, Bravo 8 Alpha, Bravo 7 Bravo – Bravo 7 Alpha. So these are RJ gates, hybrid RJ gates that can park up to an Embraer 175. So what we can do is put a 175 there. We can put the 175 there and then move this one to the appropriate spot. And voila, you can park three Uniteds at one time and you can still park an Air Canada aircraft. And obviously the gates can still go according. I know this looks a little jank, but it works. It's kind of the, the gated, tun the fixed tunnels up into the point. So obviously the jet bridges, um, I have tested them. They can't extend all the way here and it, everything extends. So it's kind of a flexibility type thing just to kind of make things unique. 
And I think it's a really cool feature to have to the airport as a way to kind of make things different and um, add that, uh, like I said already, add that flexibility. And then transitioning to this cargo section. So this is really cool. So this, you know, nothing fancy, little cargo building here that I'm utilizing. Um, you know, got a FedEx, two UPSs. This obviously is more of a wide body, a dedicated wide body stand. Uh, we have MD-11 here right now. This is a hybrid one. I'm not sure how I'm going to utilize it too much. I kind of, this is this is my fault. I really wish I had uh, layover layouts bring down the design of the stand more to this spot because I'm often finding issues if I want to use like a 747 or like a 748. It doesn't really fit. It kind of sticks out over the road a little bit. So I'm not sure how I'm going to really utilize C1X, but in theory, I can technically get away maybe parking a 7.4 on here and then just a 7.5 there. Um, and yeah, so dual taxiway setups, max wingspan of 125, which sign or I'm sorry, 135, which signifies that anything up into a 757 can do dual taxis without having any conflicts with the wingspan and having appropriate separation. This solid line in the middle is for wide body aircraft. So obviously, if an MD-11 is coming out, the dual taxi cannot be utilized because it takes up the whole taxiway. Um, I just thought that was a really cool feature. As as an airport guy, I went to school for airports. I graduated the airport management degree, so I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to designing this stuff and kind of making stuff efficient. So in my eyes, this is a very efficient layout. Having I say that it's a very efficient layout with what I have. Obviously, this, this setup is a 59 by 59 inch, so there's only so much space I can have. So I did the best I could to make it as efficient as possible and cool looking. So anyways, obviously, this looks like a mess right now, but I promise you I am having this. I'm When I have time, I'm setting it up slowly. I want to get a video out to you guys. I want to make consistent videos of this airport. I think it's going to be a fun fictional thing to do. Um, a lot have been asking about Terminal 5. In a nutshell, it's postponed indefinitely um, there's a lot of logistics and cost issues that i'm having with that and i don't really want to spend right now um there's much other things i'd rather spend and I'm, I, I hate to say it but that's just it's already been a money pit and i don't want to make it any worse than what it is um, one other thing while we're here concourse d it's still on the tables i'm not done with that it's going to happen the issue is charlotte is they are making a dual taxi behind concourse d so this is the end of the D concourse. There's going to be a dual taxiway basically where my fingers are essentially over there. So I'm kind of waiting until the real life airport gets their layout done. And um, I'm going to reach back out to layover layouts. I'll put a deposit down for a mat for it. And then we'll have that underway. So once, so at some point, the at least the short term future for my airport displays are essentially really going to focus on this fictional airport. And then once this comes online, I'll kind of be just dual dueling it. So hopefully get, you know, three or four videos out a month of these guys and just try to get you guys something because I still like doing a YouTube. I just get so tired from work. And when I do have free time, I just like hanging and whatnot. So it's not that it's not a priority. Or I don't care, but just, I don't want to make videos if I don't want to actually do it. And if I make the video, I want to make sure I have the energy and all that jazz with it. So I've already talked way longer than I normally do. And then for those that remember, you know, good and well that I always go longer than when I should. But I'll just continue the video at this. But anyways, if you stuck to the end of this video, I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to try to get some good content out for you guys, just some different unique aspects and perspectives of what I do. And try to start pumping out some videos for this fictional because I think it's really cool. Um, I think it's a neat setup. It looks awesome. And I look forward to sharing it to you guys. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Even if you watched a minute of it, I appreciate it. Uh, hope to see you again in the near future. Take care. Bye-bye.